I'm too late! How did I not see this coming? I'm too late. What if I'm not... She's about to... What will I say? How will I stop it? These thoughts are on repeat as I rush over to Marilyn's house. I ran through her front door, searching frantically for her. When I get to the back room, she's lying there. The day I saved my best friend's life was also when things took a turn in my life. I could have never imagined that shortly after her incident, she would do what she did. But let me rewind a bit and tell you the story from the start. Marilyn and I were best friends in high school and stuck together like glue. I went over to her place after school almost every day. We would hang out, gossip, do homework, try to cook new recipes, watch movies, and listen to 80s rock music. We loved singing along and talking about our favorite band members. We were so close that sometimes it felt as if we were one. We told each other everything. And so it was no surprise to me when she started to go through something serious. I was there for her when no one else was, which brought us even closer together than we already were, if that was even possible. Then one day, while I was at home doing chores, I received an ominous text message from Marilyn, which totally freaked me out. Goodbye, princess, her nickname for me. I love you so, so much. Words cannot describe. But I have to go now. Tell my mom I love her. My heart sank into my stomach. I immediately called her, but there was no answer and I knew something was seriously wrong. With a foggy mind and trembling hands, I rushed to her house. That's when I got there and found her lying in the back room. She was lying under the rickety ceiling fan which had collapsed on top of her. As I approached her laying on the floor, I noticed there was something tied from the fan. For a split second, I thought I was too late. Then to my surprise, she sat up. She looked into my eyes and neither of us said a word. I was panting, but so relieved. I tried to calm her down, then out of the blue, she kissed me. She ended up being taken to a hospital, where she stayed for three months. I visited her almost every day, bringing her the gossip from school, telling her stories to cheer her up, and we still talked loads about 80s rock music just like before. One day during my visit, she admitted to me that she had fallen in love with me. I didn't know how to feel about that, and never brought it up again. When she came home, I continued seeing her every day, but things were getting awkward. She started making advances towards me. Again, I didn't know how I felt, but I began reciprocating her advances, and we began a relationship. At first it was great, because we really did love each other, but when we finally slept together, I realized I wasn't actually into girls. I tried, and I wanted to be, but I just wasn't. When I admitted to her that I thought I was straight, but she was still my best friend, she slipped me a I was stunned! My best friend, the closest person in my life. I stood there as tears welled up in my eyes. I apologized over and over. She pinned me to the wall and kissed me. I told her no. She kissed me, yelling, You don't like this? Tell me you don't like this! At first, I said nothing. I was completely in shock, and she did things to me over and over. It wasn't until her mom came home from work and found us that I was freed from her hands. Her mom pulled her off me and helped me up. She drove me home. She promised she would readmit her to the hospital, and I agreed. After what happened, Marilyn sent me many text messages saying that she was going to do something to me or even my sisters if I told anyone about what happened. I never told anyone about this until now. When I look back at all this, I realize that I pitied her. I didn't realize that while I thought I was helping her, I was not. I had a hard time moving on, but after five years, I'm in a much more stable relationship. What Marilyn did to me still affects me today. When I hear a song that we used to listen to together, or smell her perfume, I feel uneasy. I have only just now started to tell people my story and am reaching out to others that may have had similar experiences. You are not alone.